is the Global Conservation Director for the World Wide Fund for Nature, and he joins us now live from Geneva. Dion, according to your report, global populations of fish, birds, mammals, amphibians, and reptiles have declined by 58 percent between 1970 and 2012. It's a staggering figure. What's behind this decline? Well, this is uh, years of, uh, of, of human development that has happened in a way that is uh, coupled with uh, impacts on the environment. And so we've seen habitat changes, uh, land use changes, specifically in growing more food for a growing population and a growing middle class. So if we look at, at the impacts across the, the species, we see that habitat changes is the biggest driver at the moment. And so this is where habitats have been converted uh, for other, uh, other utilization. Uh, but going forward, uh, climate change could become a, f a far greater impact going forward. And uh, what kind of human activity has led to such destruction, to be precise? So human activities such as uh, production of food has been at the forefront of this. So we have seen a huge increase in the amount of food that uh, needs to be produced to uh, feed a growing population. And we'll see this going forward as well. Now, this food system is uh, at the moment highly ineffective. We are seeing a food system where uh, up to 30 to 40 percent of the food is being wasted at any one time. We're also seeing a food uh, system where sometimes 75 percent of crops are being used to feed livestock. So dr dramatic changes are required in the food system if we're wanting to address some of these, uh, these uh, impacts on, on biodiversity. The other big system which I think we need to address is how we, f how we fuel ourselves, the uh, energy systems that sustain humanity on, on Earth. And climate change is going to be a growing impact on uh, habitats and on the future of, of humanity. So the way that we produce energy and the need to move rapidly into renewable energies is going to be at the foundation of responding to this crisis. Now you're saying uh, that there's a lot of work that needs to be done so we can reverse. The study says the planet is now entering a phase of uncertainty. Is there any chance that we can actually reverse these trends of loss and build up populations? Well, there's, there's a lot of uh, reason to be optimistic. While the trends are still downward, and it certainly points to us having to, to react very urgently, uh, there's reason to be optimistic as well. So if we look at 2015, we saw a growing awareness about environmental issues. We saw a growing awareness about climate change. We saw uh, more than 500,000 people turn out for a march on climate change. We saw a pope's encyclical dealing with the duty of care for our planet. So the awareness levels are at higher levels than ever. We're also seeing radical changes in technology, where the prices of solar energy are, are coming down by 80 percent over the last five years. Uh, so this is going to change the energy economy completely. And then the final reason we, we have uh, to be uh, optimistic is that we have a changing governance system. In 2015, we saw the world come together around the Paris Agreement and also come together to define 17 sustainable development goals. And this is the first time the world has worked on an integrated agenda, an agenda which incorporates the environment, uh, the economy, as well as the social development needs of our planet. And we think that it's only through this integrated approach that we will really be able to address the fundamental issues that we're facing. All right, Dion Nell from the World Wide Fund for Nature, thank you very much.